What's up, guys? Welcome back to another edition of Gents Lounge Live. So today we are talking all about whiskey, specifically Scotch whiskey, and specifically the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. So I have my friend Jenna Eli here with us today, and she will be talking a little bit about what the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is, and we will be taking all of your questions that you have about whiskey. So let's bring Jenna in here. How's it going? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Not too bad. Hanging in there. How are you? I'm doing pretty well. I'm, you know, it's a beautiful day here in Southern California. So yes, it is. Yeah, try not to uh, complain too much about the current situation and, and find the good stuff. So not so, bad. Exactly. So for those of us who don't really know you, how did you get into whiskey and scotch and spirits in general? And then what is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society all about? So for me, my whiskey journey started um, just now four years ago. I just celebrated my kind of four year anniversary of being in this in this you know love affair with whiskey and the the reason that i decided to jump into it was my husband um bought off a bar program and we acquired a large array of different spirits and at the time it was not really my thing you know like i was the glass of wine at christmas kind of girl like yeah. i just it never interests me and interesting yeah and so when he brought it home you know i did lots of eye rolling and you know, huffing and puffing that I was going to have to dust all these bottles now that I want to do <laughs> with. And, you know, I, I was like, great, you know, we don't have space for this. Why are you bringing this home? And one night he was drinking a glass of Macallan 18 and he just had this look on his face like, oh my gosh, this is the best thing I've ever had. And, and I was like, all right, like, whatever, I'll taste it. And yes. so I tasted it and it just blew my mind. I was so caught off guard that whiskey could taste like that. Right. Um, I think in me just being so surprised by it, I wanted to learn more about it. And I was like, okay, like, what is this stuff? You know, I don't know anything about it, but this was beautiful and amazing. And, and so I kind of jumped down this rabbit hole um, of just wanting to learn as much as I possibly can, you know, a, about the spirit. So Macallan 18 was the first, the that one that got you, everyone's got the one that, that right. gets them into it. And that's, that's a really good one. Yeah. And that, that was it. And so, um, I, I was familiar with the Instagram platform. And so, um, I had run a, a vintage resale business through Instagram, you know, at the time, like, you know, years before being a stay at home mom awesome. and yeah. And I just, you know, built a business to their side. So I was very familiar with the platform. So I was like, okay, there's got to be people out there who will help like teach me, you know, like what this like stuff is, you know, that right. I just so surprised by. And so I started, I started, um, my Instagram account, whiskey, go girl. And I just started asking questions and, you know, talking about what it is I was drinking and what that experience was like for me. And I have met some of the coolest freaking people in the world through whiskey, I cannot, like, I could gush on about just the human connection of this, you know, for, for hours. And yes. so I've been, I've been in it, you know, ever since, and I have no desire to leave anytime soon. I, I'm still, you know, thirsty for the knowledge. And, and so, yeah, here I am. Oh, getting, awesome. getting started. <laughs> so, so how did, first of all, what is the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society for people that don't know? And how did you end up getting involved? So the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is a members only whiskey club. We're like the coolest whiskey club in the world. And, um, you know, we're, we're global. We have chapters all over the world. Our, our home, you know, spiritual home is in Edinburgh. And that's where we have um, our vaults and our tasting rooms. But uh, we are a, a members only whiskey club that puts out single cask whiskeys. So we, um, we have a, a great team over in the UK who has the coolest job in the world of going around and sourcing these beautiful, amazing casks from now, I think over 140 different distilleries around the world. And um, they, they go out and source these casks and, and we bring them back to our warehouse um, right outside of Glasgow. And, and we, we age them a little longer if we think it needs it. And, and then we have a tasting panel who tastes all of these, um, you know, casks that we have maturing. And when they feel like it's, it's good enough to be bottled, then we bottle those and we put them up for our members. 
and it's basically yep. you have to be a member to have access to these bottles <laughs> and there's usually it seems to be only like around 250 to 300 bottles that end up being produced for for the majority of the casks correct so, so you're getting yeah one single cask will give you roughly you know if it's if it's a, a hogshead that's roughly going to give you about you know anywhere from 250 275 maybe somewhere in in that um you know sometimes it's less yeah in that ballpark and that's for the whole world and then you know once it's gone it's gone you can never recreate you know a single cask that's what's so unique about them and you know here at the society that's you know that's kind of our mission is to to celebrate the uniqueness of these single cask whiskeys because you know these aren't whiskeys that you can just run down to the store and grab you know these aren't you know that consistent flavor profile that you're going to find you know in every bottle of Macallan 18 that you buy or you know whatever the the, the case is these are little whiskey snapshots in time and we celebrate them and we cherish them because once they're gone they're gone forever so i mean that's that's so cool because i think a lot of people you know get really stuck into like brand names and yeah. like age statements and you don't really realize that you know we have we have a 10 a 12 and a 19 year old that we're going to taste today and yeah. you know just because something's 10 years old does not mean it's not as good as something that's 19 years old it's right. different, yes, but you know, there's even like the the Taiwanese whiskeys are not even have no age statements on them, and yeah. they're phenomenal. So yeah. I think it's also a good education to kind of get people out of that brand name age statement kind of box and just try things because they're beautiful and they taste good. Like, don't worry about the brand name, don't worry about where it came from. Just you know, taste it, enjoy it. If you like it, you like it. Exactly. And and that's the thing. It's it's we really want to focus on the flavor. We want to focus on what's inside the bottle, not, you know, the name of the distillery on the outside or, you know, how old it is, because I've had, you know, whiskeys that are old as dirt and right. they taste like dirt. And <laughs> I would not like go and pour those, you know, casually at home. You know, and then I've had, you know, older whiskeys that have, you know, blown my mind. But I can also say the same thing about a lot of young whiskeys, you know, some of these these young especially young Isla whiskeys. I mean, they're just, they're beautiful and they're explosive and they're just the, the, the amount of flavor that you can get in these younger whiskeys, you know, is, is really exciting. So we here just try to celebrate all of it. That's amazing. So let's, let's taste the first one. What are we going with first? All right. So the first one we're going to be tasting is, and I'll get into like kind of how our label system works and all Perfect, that. Perfect. Cause I'm very interested. Yeah, I'll get into all that. Um, but first, let's get some whiskey in us, and then we can we can get onto the labels. But um, yeah. the first one we're going to be drinking is a 12 year space side whiskey, um, and this is from a refill ex bourbon hogshead. Yep, there it is. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Got um, it. From Distillery 80, and I'll get to that um, how that works in a minute. And this is the 13th cask that we have bottled from that distillery, and it looks like. There were 282 bottles of this um, that came out of this one single cask, and that was for you know all of our members around the world. So I'm yes. excited to taste it, and yes. I really enjoyed this one. So. You, pour, you already poured it. I need to get on. Oh, I'm, I need I'm to get ahead. <laughs> right, I'm ready. <laughs> so. Um, one thing too about all of our whiskeys is that you know these are single cask, um, meaning that they're at cask strength, meaning there has been no water added to these. They're non-chill filter. There's no art. There's no coloring. E150. These are just the pure, you know, form of whiskey. And I always like to tell people it's kind of like putting a straw in a barrel and just right. you know drinking it from a straw, like straight from the barrel. That's what you're getting here. Um, and so this one is 60.8% ABV. So um, I always have a little water on deck just, you know. Yes. And we can talk about water, too, in a little <laughs> bit. But uh, all right. Well, Slanja. Thank you. That's so good. So, it like, is. this is actually the only one that I tasted previous to this, but like my mouth instantly starts to water every right. time I take the first sip of it. It's just, I mean, you can taste the cast strengthness of it and it's, sure. it's warm and spicy and then it, it kind of gets a little floral and a little sweeter and nicer and smoother. And then I did end up adding a little bit of water to that and like 
it's it opened up so much and tasted just so good. Well, you can kind of think of, you know, cask strength whiskey, you know, kind of like a suit in a way, like a right. nice suit, you know, you can add, you can kind of, you know, church it up with, you know, um, a handkerchief. Is that, yeah. is that correct me if I'm pocket square? I don't know a lot about, you know, suits, <laughs> but you know, you can add certain things like you, you, you can add water and you have a very different, you know, look or, or experience on your palate. You know, you can, you know, if you want to drink it over an ice cube or if you want to mix it with orange juice or whatever it is that, you know, floats your boat, you can really tailor a cash strength whiskey, you know, to your liking versus, you know, going out and buying something that's already been, you know, pre-tailored for you. So. Right. Because I, that's, that's what I was saying. Like, if you want it less strong, add water. Yeah. You have the choice to do that. You which do. Once, when you get something that's bottled at, you know, 80 proof, that's, it's done for you. Right. And this, yeah. they, they chose how you should drink it. This kind of gives right. you the option now, which exactly. it does take a little bit of experience to know that, you know, cause you might try this, it's cast strength and be like, this is awful. Right. But then, yeah. you know, you might need, if you, if you don't know, you should add some water to kind of make it a little more palatable or fit your, your palate, then yeah. You know, you got to, you got to do a little bit of learning, learning sometimes. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, I can't say, I, I'm trying to remember the first cash drink whiskey I, I ever had. And I probably had it and I was, you know, taken aback, you know, just by, you know, the yeah. ABV, the, the sure strength of the whiskey, um, you know, but as, as time go, has gone on and I've really, you know, gotten to, to educate my palate and, and myself on just, you know, the, the magic that a single cast can bring, it's, um, I, I find so much more flavor and complexity and it is just like layers and layers and layers of flavor, you know, in these whiskeys and, and then adding water, you get, you know, a very different experience. It opens up, you know, different flavors and aromas. So I say, drink it how you like it. Well, also, and I think, I think a lot of us got a very bad interpretation of what, you know, 120 proof, 150 proof kind of, you know, because we would like Everclear or 151, like I you do. would just <laughs> drinking to get, you know, messed up and and it burned and it was terrible and it had no flavor. And right. then when you see, when, whenever you saw like, whoa, it's a hundred proof, like that's going to be so strong and so terrible because you had that interpretation before. But I think a lot of people don't realize is that when the cast, like when you're pulling cast strength whiskeys, you're leaving all the natural oils in there. So you kind of get those natural oils to like, coach your throat a little bit and yeah. at least like it it calms it down it's not it's not like ever clear 151 light your mouth on fire hot. every single time right yeah. <laughs> yeah and that's the thing too is you know in drinking single cask whiskey it's always good to, to wet your palate you know so that first it's always going to be a little more intense than you know the second or the third and you know as you you continue to to taste it you will you will you know, start to kind of unravel all of those different flavors that are, that are in the whiskey. So, um, nice. um yeah. yeah. Can you, can you talk a little bit about this whiskey in particular, if you yeah. know so, some like secrets about it? Yeah. So this, give um, us the inside scoop. <laughs> yeah. So, so I'll talk about our labels, um, here for a little bit. So we don't put distillery names on the bottles. So we have a coding system. And so if you look at your bottle, it'll say Society Cask number 80.13. Hold this up for the audience. So yes. that 80 refers to the distillery that this comes from. And the 13 refers to the amount of cask that we have bottled from that distillery. So this is the 13th cask that we have bottled from distillery 80. And again, the reason that we don't put the distillery names on the bottles is because we don't want people to focus on you know, where this is coming from, because you cannot compare, and we'll just keep using the McAllen reference because, right. you know, it's, that's <laughs> what we're started with, but you know, you take a single cast McAllen and it's not going to taste the same as, you know, the McAllen that you can just go and pick up, you know, at Total Wine. Right. It's very different. And so we don't want people to say, well, I don't, you know, I don't like this distillery, so I don't want to try that single cast from that distillery. Well, it's kind of hard to say because, the thing with a single cask is you really never know what you're going to get. And they're so different and so unique that it, it's that's, really That's hard. why there's a master blender to right. make yeah. everything taste the same. Yeah. Well, you, and you know, the thing is with a lot of the whiskeys that, you know, you go in and you purchase just a single malt, um, you know, that's 
lots and lots and lots of different casks blended together to create right. that consistent flavor profile so it tastes the same every time you buy it you know whereas these are I don't know, these these are like just little adventures you just you don't know you know where it's going to take you so right. I'm, uh, but this this so this particular one um this particular whiskey um is actually part of and actually all three of them the, all three of the ones that we're going to taste today are um, part of our new member bundle. So if you are not a member of the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and I'll talk about membership here in a second, um, this is, we have kind of done some special pricing to include your one-year membership in a bottle. Um, and this is one of the three options that we do have available at the moment. And that's, um, that's another thing that's amazing about, because guys, I don't know if you know, but I wasn't familiar or very familiar with the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society before this. But after getting involved and after tasting a few of these things, it's probably one of the best deals in whiskey. Like there's there's 19 year old scotch for what 125, 150. Like it's insane. You you don't you don't got you don't get a 19 year old scotch for 150 bucks. You know. Right. And you know these are these are again you know so unique and so different. You can't find these in a bar or at a liquor store or in a restaurant you can only get them if you're a member of the society and so uh the the 19 year old one the next one which i guess we can scoot to that one next um this is bundle so this includes your one-year membership and this bottle and i that's 200 for yeah this particular bottle and your one-year membership and um, a one-year membership costs $99 and um, there are so there are a few ways that you can join and I'll kind of go through that really quick um, and then we can taste this one <laughs> Perfect. Um, so there are a few ways that you can join so you can you can join um, and just buy a membership flat out that's $99 that covers you for the whole year um, then you will get your membership card in the mail which I don't know if you've gotten yours in the mail yet um, I have not but you will get your membership card in the mail, and that gives you access to um, to purchase any whiskey from our website. And it also gives you access to our tasting rooms. And we have tasting rooms in London, Glasgow, and in Edinburgh. So if anyone makes the trip over to London or Edinburgh, Glasgow, um, we do have tasting rooms there that you can, you know, sneak into and try just it is a rainbow of whiskeys yeah. in there. It is, is, it, is it all Scotch malt whiskey? It's all like, all cast Scotch malt whiskey. So it's like, like the vaults of what's been produced. You can, exactly. can kind of get a sip of a little bit of everything. Exactly. And it is, I have yet to go. I was supposed to go. And then um, my trip was canceled due to kind of the current situation. Yes. I'm, I'm hoping to, to get over there and experience it. I, I've heard amazing things. And I heard the restaurant um, the, at the Kaleidoscope Bar there is, I think was voted the best restaurant in Scotland a few years ago. So you can get a great Amazing. meal, and drink some great whiskey. So I, I, Scot Scotland is definitely, definitely on my list of, oh. of travels very, very soon. Yeah, One, I want to play golf and two, I want to <laughs> drink scotch. So like, it's, it's the best trip for me. <laughs> no, there you go. Um, so yeah, you get that with your membership. Um, and you also um, receive unfiltered magazine. Um, and that comes to you quarterly, and that is just jam-packed full of all kinds of great whiskey, you know, stories and education and information. And so those are a lot of fun. Um, I don't have one here with me at the moment, but those are those are a lot of fun to read through. So you get that with the $99 membership, um, or you could buy one of our new member bundles, which include one of these three bottles and a three-year, or I'm sorry, and a one-year membership. And so ba basically you pay, end up paying for the bottle and you get f pretty much 50 bucks off your membership or 50 yep. bucks off the bottle. Yep. So, I mean, it's, it's a great deal, especially for the one, the tasting room access and the, the magazine, like right. that's worth, that's worth it on its own just because you'll get a ton of whiskey knowledge. And then you guys, if I'm not wrong, correct me. Um, but you guys taste all of the bottles that you come out live on YouTube to kind of give people the tasting notes and kind of get their opinion so they know what to expect when they're purchasing because you know you're kind of purchasing blind one because it's it's a blind cask and but you know one if you tried enough you can kind of taste or you can kind of trust I guess your guys's opinion and 
Can you tell me a little bit about, I know there's like a color coded like flavor system. There if is. I'm, yes. So like if you, if you know, if you like a color, you can kind of like stick in that category and you're like, I've liked this from that and I'll try some yeah. more. So we, um, we have it broken down into 12 different flavor profiles and you'll see the, the color strips on the bottles. So yes. the first one, the float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, um, is in our right, light flavor profile. So that color is our deep, um, rich and dried fruits flavor profile. So a lot of those kind of just deeper, you know, richer, you know, dark kind of fruitier flavors. Yes. Um, and then the green one you have is our lightly peated, I believe. Um, and that is in, in the green, but yeah, so we have 12 different flavor profiles that we kind of break everything down into just to, you know, kind of acts as like a, just a navigation tool. You know, because I mean, and it's helpful. Yeah. And, you know, maybe you come to whiskey and and you know that, you know, you like those those deeper, richer flavor profiles. So maybe you start with something in the deep, rich and dried fruit flavor profile and just kind of build your palate up and, and teach your palate. Um, and, and another great thing, too, is that, you know, if, if members ever have any questions or they, you know, want to know something about whiskey or maybe where they should go, they can literally just pick up the phone and call us and it'll be me or, you know, my colleagues, Ben, Zach, or Brianna, and we're happy to talk whiskey, you know, until the sun goes down, so. That's amazing. So before we get into the second whiskey, we have a couple questions that came in, yeah. and I think they'll just be fun to answer in general, but one, what is the best whiskey mixer, in your opinion? That's a good question. Um, so I think my, I love a highball. I love a uh -huh. peated and so yes. I guess you know Very Japanese to keep it simple um you know just a little soda water would be my pick just because I like kind of my whiskey cocktails to be more spirit forward yes um, and I really want to taste the whiskey so yeah a lemon yeah, wedge I, and some soda water I I completely agree with you especially for scotch like I don't do I don't do many scotch cocktails Unless, right. unless they have like, it sounds bad, but like bourbon influence, then I'll do like a, an old fashioned with it or something. But, but bourbon, on the other hand, I'll do, I'll do a lot more cocktails with bourbon. And I just feel like scotch is, it's not that it's like refined or too good for a cocktail, but I just, oh. it's good enough on its own. It's interesting on its own. And most of the time it's more expensive than I'd like to try to make a cocktail out of it. Yeah. That's, that, those are, those are, you know, those are great points. Um, yeah, I think the only scotch cocktail I ever make is a highball, like a peated, I love yeah. just a peated highball and everything else. I think my, my big kind of favorite cocktails are outside of a penicillin or yeah, like an old pal with rye and Campari. Yeah. yeah. Um, question and question number two. Is your whiskey available globally? It is, right? Yes. So we have chapters yes. all over the world. And so just depending where you are, um, there's a good chance that we have a chapter um, where you are. But uh, yes, so we have chapters, you know, here in the U.S., Canada, you know, Scotland, Japan. Australia. Australia. Yeah, the I Australia saw, I one. I saw that one. Yeah, Matt Bailey out there does a really great job. And um I, I hope to get out there one day to experience Australia and whiskey in Australia. I think that would be really awesome. So, yes. And then one more, I guess, distribution question. Are we out of luck of getting bottles if we're from a state where you can't buy online? Um, you know, that is a good question. And that is a question that I would have to, you know, talk with our company about. Um, yeah. But feel free to email, you know, me or at Jenna at SMWSA or um, you can send it to info at SMWSA and, and we can look into that for you. Perfect. And then I guess a they're from, they're from Colorado. So that, I guess you can't buy alcohol online in Colorado. I don't know. I think we have a large member base out in Colorado. Um, I know okay. we've done some events out there as well. Um, and speaking of events, you know, you had mentioned that we're doing a lot of these tastings online. Um, yeah. and we're doing that obviously because of the current climate, but, um, when things are kind of back to normal and we can go back out into the world. Um, we host events all over the country. So here in LA, 
we'll have to get together and actually, you know, enjoy some yeah. whiskey and listen. But we we host tasting pre, uh, outdoor preview tastings um, monthly, you know, in cities all over all over the country. So that's that's awesome. I mean, I'm honestly trying to get a few of my friends involved in this right now, so we can all buy a bottle every month, and then we can all taste yeah. five different bottles together. So. Fun. And, and, you know, whiskey's for sharing. So I think, you know, that's, that's such a, a fun idea. I love having people, you know, over and, and sharing all different kinds of whiskeys just to see what people think. So yes, yeah. I agree. So one more question before we taste the second one. Do you prefer your whiskey neat or on the rocks? Neat. Yes. Why? I guess. Let's, let's, let's so, dive deeper. <laughs> yeah. So, so for me, actually there I do have one whiskey that I do love on ice it's like the perfect kind of summer by the pool whiskey um but I Which whiskey is that so <laughs> Glenfiddich 12 year on ice yes yes is, it is just it's like the perfect kind of pool sipping summer whiskey it's it's I don't know what it is but um typically for me um I don't like to add ice because ice has a tendency to constrict the flavors so mm -hmm. when you, you add ice into it, it, it kind of takes all those flavor molecules and it kind of shrinks them down and it constricts them. Whereas when you're having it at room temperature or you can warm it up in your hand a little, it releases a lot of those oils. So you're kind of getting, you know, more aroma and flavor that way. Right. Um, so I prefer to always start, you know, I always start neat, um, especially when I'm trying something for the first time. And then I can kind of experiment with water or, you know, that kind of stuff, different glassware. Um, yes. So the, yep. the Denver and Lily. Yes. Glassware. <laughs> you know, <laughs> a few of those. I've I've I managed to break all of my nice glasses. Um, wow. I've I've broken a few Denver and Lily glasses. <laughs> they they do a really really good job, and I mean obviously these are beautiful as well. These are our society um, tasting copitas. And, and the reason that, you know, we use this glass is just because it kind of has that that belly bottom and that tulip shape. So all of those aromas are, you know, being filtered up, you know, in the right, right. way into your nose. So when I'm tasting whiskeys for the first time, I always try to use a glass like this. Um, that, you know, same. Yeah. It, but if it's, I mean, it's, I would say it, it honestly does make a difference. And does. people... I didn't believe it either. I like, I thought it was all bull crap. And I was like, no way a glass makes a whiskey taste different. And I was sitting with Denver one day and he had his, all his glasses lined up and he, we filled the same whiskey in all three of like his gin, his bourbon and his scotch yeah. glass. And I closed my eyes and I smelled them. And honest to God, they all smelled different, which was one mind blowing to me, but I did get the most, I feel like I got the most flavor out of the one that was meant for scotch, which we were tasting scotch at the time. So I was like, okay, there is some science there. Um, oh, someone just asked, why not use the Glen Clear Karen glass? That, I mean, that is, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, they, they, they got the market share. Right. Yeah. And <laughs> that, that is also a great option. Um, you Similar know, one shape. of the, yeah, very similar shape, um, but this has actual like, has a little stem on it, and the reason that a lot of these glasses have a stem is so you don't influence the smell by your hands being so close to your face. So, you know, just like I don't know, you just pet the dog, or you know, right. made dinner, or wash your hands with a scented soap. That smell is gonna be on your hands, and so when you have something that has a little stem, it just kind of gives you know space between your stinky hand and your nose so you can smell what's in the glass that makes a yeah. lot of sense <laughs> all right so let's let's move on to yeah. fruity earthy and exciting yes so this is a 19 year um space side whiskey from distillery number 36 and this is our 168th cask that we have bottled from this distillery and if you can see kind of on the bottom where your finger, yep, mm -hmm. <laughs> where your finger is. So um, we just put out a new labeling system and our labels now um, tell you the initial cask that the whiskey went into. So this went in um, to an ex-bourbon hogshead initially, and then this was finished um, in a first fill X Moscatel cask or hogshead. And so that's, a, I believe, a Portuguese, a Portuguese dessert wine or style wine. Um, 
and so, so essentially was, sh sherry or port-esque yeah it's a uh, um, portuguese version right I, I don't have a lot of experience in tasting ex moscatel um yeah. and so i i don't think i could pick it out of a, a lineup blind but um i know it makes for you know a great finish on a whiskey but um so all of our, our new labels will have both the initial cask and the cask that the whiskey was finished in. So everything is is right here, you know, on the label where where it comes from, how old it is, you know, what what cask it was in and um, when it was distilled. So I guess now I, I kind of have to ask, did yep. did you or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society decide the final cask or did, is that kind of how it was? Because I know you guys also buy barrels and then do some experimental stuff as well. Um, so I, I don't know about this particular one. My guess would be that our tasting panel made that decision, mm -hmm. you know, that we, we had this, you know, beautiful spirit and they transferred it into um, this ex Moscatel hogshead um, to kind of see what would happen. And, you know, you can see right away just from the color. Yeah. You know, that very different color, you know, it's that kind of really beautiful, you know, right, top from the amber color. Yeah, huge difference. That's crazy. And two, um, I get asked this question a lot of what a hogshead is. Mm -hmm. And a hogshead, it, the best way for me to describe it is kind of like a Frankenstein cask. And so you have all of these bourbon barrels that go over to Scotland, um, you know, because in bourbon, you can only use a new charred American oak barrel one time and then it has to get, you know, reused by someone else because in bourbon you can't use the same barrel twice right. and so these end up going over to scotland and a, a typical bourbon barrel is about 200 liters a hogshead is going to be about 250 liters and what that hogshead it, hogshead is is it's basically a bunch of bourbon casks that have been broken down and rebuilt to be a little bit bigger size with new oak heads interesting so you don't really know what cask what bourbon cask they come from so you could have you know five from one cask you know five from another you know five from another and so it's kind of like a little frankenstein cask um i put a, i put up a little picture on the youtube channel so people can kind of see the difference between a regular whiskey barrel yeah um, a a butt a butt cask. yeah those are like 500 that's like 500 liters and then yep. so i got three of them lined up so people can kind of see what the difference is yeah, and the butts are going to be your sherries, your fortified wines, your port, you know. Um, the Moscatel, maybe? Perhaps. Um, this, <laughs> this one only um, put out 272 bottles. That's so true. I think this would be on, you know, back in kind of that 250 liter range. But um, yeah, so that is kind of your fun fact for the day on what a hogshead is. <laughs> there, there we go. So shall we? taste i haven't yeah. tasted this one yet oh, so. okay so take a minute you know kind of yeah you no know, take it in can you guide me through tasting whiskey yes for the, for the people at home yeah this is this is my favorite part um i love i love to to kind of set the mood when it comes to, to tasting whiskey um so a few things so when you're nosing a whiskey you don't ever want to shove your nose into the glass um, if you do that, you're going to get a huge rush of alcohol and it's just going to kind of obliterate, you know, that limbic system and fry the yes. inside of your nose, basically. <laughs> so um, what I like to do is I just like to keep it, you know, a good distance, um, yeah. but I, I move it. So I kind of, you know, my left nostril and right nostril are going to smell different things. Um, and so I always just kind of like to, you know, yeah, just like that. And then keep your mouth open just a little bit. Yep. So, yep. Keep your mouth open. Take it in. So this is this is very fruit forward. This whiskey. Yes. I'm getting a lot of those really bright kind of plummy type, you know, fruit yeah. stone fruits on the nose. Um, yeah, it's it's really it's beautiful. Really so. And then. So this once, is the most important part. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <Tasty part. laughs> So when you take a sip, I, I don't take in a huge, you know, sip. You don't, again, don't want to, you know, burn your palate out. Um, yes. but take a sip in and just hold it in your mouth for a few seconds, you know, before you swallow it, kind of giving it an opportunity to, to coat your entire palate. That's fun. That's really good. Yes. And it's, then 
It's really good. Yeah, it is. It's um, that's a very unique flavor profile. You know, it has a lot of those kind of leathery tobacco, like gee, it's like I don't know. I imagine being in a. They're subtle lot of though. Like yeah. they're there, but they're not. It, it doesn't taste like a leather jacket, guys. So. No, it doesn't taste like a leather jacket. Yes. But there are those, you know, those kind of those very rich and dark and kind of nutty profiles. It tastes like a like a dark plum pie with pecans or something on oh, top of it. Good. Like it's that's really good. And this is also cast strength, so fifty six point six. So a hundred and twelve hundred and thirteen point two. Yeah, just about. Yep. So wow. and it doesn't taste like that at all. Like I wouldn't even add water to this. Yeah, it doesn't. And and you know, the thing too with, with cash strength is, you know, I've had some whiskeys that are well over sixty percent that drink like they're fifty percent. And yep. I had a whiskey the other night that was at forty five and a half percent and I was like oh my gosh, like, is this 60%, you know? So again, yeah. it's, I mean, not, not that we're, we're, we're kind of, I'm going to, I'm going to digress real quick, but like, it's like Brugladi Octum or like Octomore versus Ardbeg. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I can drink 120 proof Octomore all day long yeah. and like some like Ardbeg 10, I'm like, this is not my cup of tea. This isn't yeah. my favorite. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's the process and the barley and that. But like, yeah. it's just some some whiskeys hit people differently. Exactly. And everything is, you know, the beautiful thing about whiskey is that it's subjective. So it can right. be whatever you want it to be. And that's what I really love about the spirit is that, you know, it's you just it's it's so personal you can make you know each each drink you have each different whiskey you have you know so personal and um you know there's a lot of factors that go into that whether it's you know fermentation times or you know varietals or yeast strains or you know the finish you know the the wood the wood plays a huge role in that so there are so many factors that go into the final product and and how this whiskey tastes right and i mean even like we were, we were saying before we even jumped on live, but I honestly like the 12 year old so much. That's like this, different. this, this is phenomenal, but I feel like I need to have the right occasion to drink this, Yeah. you know, and the, the 12 that we drank before just felt more like any time was a go. Yep. So just, Cause it was, e <laughs> it was super easy. It had a good flavor and this one feels more like sophisticated and complicated. And it feels like I need to be, you know, listening to the right music, sitting in the right chair, yeah, doing, the, doing the right thing. Like this would be really good with a cigar actually, because it's very fruit forward and very sweet. And it would just, the smokiness would balance it very, very well. But yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely enjoy this with a couple cigars. Yeah, this is, this is like special whiskey, you know, like kind of tuck it in the back of the cupboard and, or I don't know, mine, <laughs> mine are all special. They're all special yeah. to me, but... <laughs> I could definitely see, you know, this with a cigar and that would be, yeah. that would be a great pairing. So another question came in yeah. from my buddy, David. Um, he asked, what is a perfect whiskey to get for a real whiskey connoisseur with a large collection who's tasted everything, something unexpectedly brilliant they may or may not have tried before? Um, I think honestly, I'm going to answer this real quick, but the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society is probably a good option to start with, but if you don't want to buy a membership and you're just looking to get it as a gift for somebody, there's probably three that I would recommend. I would recommend Jefferson's Ocean or Aged at Sea, the Ocean Bourbon. I'd recommend Black Art 4 by Brooke Lottie <laughs> or Black Art 3, any of the Black Arts, honestly. Any of the Black Arts. <laughs> yeah. And what a, uh, something. Maybe like an interesting, like actually Four Roses Small Barrel Select at this moment, just because it's newish and maybe he hasn't tried it yet. You know, there's the, the beautiful thing about, you know, trying to find something for someone who kind of has it all or yes. has 
taste it a lot. You know, a single cask is really, I think, the way to go. One, yep. because they're, they're so limited. You know, once they're gone, they're gone. You can never recreate it. And one of the things that I've loved about, you know, not only being a member of the site, but, you know, being on this team is that I've tasted whiskeys that one I've never even heard of before. Right. From distilleries I didn't even know existed. And, you know, a lot of the the distilleries that, you know, we're able to bottle from don't put out single cask whiskeys. A lot right. of their whiskeys are just, you know, made for blends. And so you don't ever really get to taste what a single cask from, you know, some of these distilleries tastes like. And so that's one of the the really awesome and unique things about, you know, just a single cask in general is that it literally is just a moment in time that you get to bottle and enjoy and you better savor it because, you know, you'll never get it again. Yes. So, so David, this is your answer. Any of these bottles will be interesting for a real whiskey connoisseur because one, they probably can't get it anywhere else. And two, it will never exist after the 200 or so bottles are sold. If anyone has any questions, you know, after this, please feel free to email me. Um, I'm happy to, to answer any any other questions that, you know, we're not able to get to. So now this, this is really, really good. Um, so shall we move on to the last one? Last one. This and is I, a smoky, a smoky one, correct? This is our PD, this is our PD offering, which, you know, I think you and I both have a love for, for Pete. Yes. Um, but one thing is I did not, and this is just kind of a tip if you're ever doing a, a whiskey tasting and you have multiple different whiskeys. Um, I did not actually pour this one yet because, you know, when you open a peated whiskey, the aroma really does fill the room. And so um, we don't want that to influence the way that the first two whiskeys, you know, smell on the nose. So always kind of wait till the end to, to pour your peat bombs. So it doesn't, you know, overpower the room. Yes. I love that sound, by the way. A cork pop, like, is that just, that's the best sound. Oh, it's the best. There we go. <laughs> this smells like a straight up barbecue. Like, okay. it smells like Memorial Day weekend all there over again. <laughs> I like that. I may have to like, steal that. It smells like, like Memorial Day weekend. Like Texas barbecue. It's, that, sus, that smells delicious. It is. Um, it is very delicious. So this is a 10-year Isla whiskey um, from a refill ex-bourbon hogshead. So this is just full maturation and ex-bourbon cask. Which is pretty standard for yeah. Scotch in general, just so yeah. if you don't know that. Um, and you can, you know, by the color, like you were yeah. just showing color difference. Um, yeah, so with like a, with like a wine aged cast, you get something darker or more plum colored, or and then older could tend to get darker as well. Right. Yeah. Not necessarily. Color really doesn't have much to do with with flavor. Yeah, you know, it's it's kind of like that don't judge a book by its cover. Yes. If you could kind of Which follow follow that guy. Why I'm so glad you guys bottle in dark green. Yeah. So no one's well, one, you're not influenced by it because you can't really see it or can you can you buy these at any stores around or you have to be a member? Yeah. yeah you have to be a member. You cannot these are not in, you know, any liquor but store. I did see there are some bars, right, that you can go to and possibly taste some of these uh, bottles. Yeah, on, I, on the site there was one in like Tennessee or somewhere yeah. in the wing, somewhere else I saw maybe. And I know um, here, I believe the Tam O'Shanter um, down in LA. Yeah. Uh, I know they may have a bottle or two. So to kind so of if you, guys, if you guys are into trying and want to go check out the website, there's a, there's a few a few bars that I saw on there that could be yeah. if you want to just taste before you become a member. And our website um, is smwsa.com. Yes, I have it linked in the description below. So you guys can join, check yeah. it out. <laughs> um, so tell me about, does, does the, do you know what distillery number, distillery number 53 is? Yes. Um, again, that's not something that we publicly put out just because. Okay. But you know that you just I don't do. tell people. Okay. In, in the world of the internet, the internet knows. So okay. 
I will just leave it at that. But um, <laughs> So we can figure it out if we do enough research. I think if, yes, get a few drams and I think you'll, you'll figure it out. But, um, <laughs> it's like a scavenger hunt or an yeah. Easter egg, you know. Um, so yeah, this one is, um, a, again, a 10 year Isla whiskey and, you know, Isla is kind of synonymous with that beautiful, just vibrant peat, you know, aroma and flavor. Although there are some whiskeys that come out of Isla that are not peated. I know our beloved Brook um, yes. is one of those distilleries that puts out both peated and unpeated malts. Um, and this one is at 58.3% and there were 289 bottles of this to go around for the world. So I am, I mean, I'm such a lover of peat, so I'm excited. Is, is there a certain allocation for like different countries? Does like America only get 30% of the oh, total? We, oh, it just goes to whoever can get it first. Yeah, kind of we, thing? I mean, I'm not a hundred percent sure kind of how the logistics of that work. Um, but we do get a good amount. Um, you know, recently we've, we've had a large demand, um, right. you know, for, for our whiskeys. And so we are working really hard to get more whiskey brought here to the States. And on June 2nd, we will be having our largest outturn um, to date. And the outturn is the day that we release new casks out to our members. And so I think we're pushing almost 30 different casks that are going to be released on June 2nd, which is really exciting because we've never released that many, you know, at one time before. So That's we will have awesome. a large variety um, and there are some distilleries in there that, um, we've not seen, you know, typically. So how many members are in the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society? So globally, gosh, I want to say over 30,000. Wow. Globally. So we have a, a large, and that's on a global, on a global yeah. scale. So, you know, in retrospect, the whole world, <laughs> yeah. um, but we have, we have a, a, a great member base here in the States and, you know, in, in all States. And uh, it's, it's been very exciting to, to get to those and, and to meet everyone and kind of see what their take is on, on single cask whiskey. Um, you know, it's a little different for everyone. So. That's awesome. So I, I've been tasting. It's oh. <laughs> really good. Sorry. I got a little ahead of myself. That's okay. I, I won't, I won't blame you for it. <laughs> it smells so good. That is, that is Memorial Day weekend. It's really good. And you know, it's 10 years old. It's not super aged and it's still delicious and smooth and it has a little like kick to it, but it's not overpowering. Yeah, this this one is, you know, this this distillery I think puts out, you know, really kind of sooty and just beautiful viscosity, and you know, there's there's that salty maritime kind of coastal influence in there that you're getting, um, yes. but kind of deep down you're also getting like almost like a like a lemon pound cake or like a lemon, there's like a lemon sweetness, you know, mm -hmm. kind of in the belly of it. So there's definitely a lot happening um, in that whiskey. <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, they're all so different. Very different. But, but for someone who really appreciates trying new things and whiskey in general, I don't think you could go wrong with any of them. Yeah. Um, unless you don't like smoky and peat and right like, if, if you're then, not in peat or you know that kind of you know profile we wouldn't steer you in that direction right um, we would encourage you to maybe you know try some you know to kind of build up that that kind of palette awareness but um you know we we really do have it sounds crazy you know, or scripted, but kind of something for everyone, you know, and yeah. all of our flavor profiles, you know, some people just like that crisp ex bourbon, you know, kind of light and delicate profile like we had in the first one. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people really like those, those deeper, richer, you know, tones in whiskey. And, uh, we, we have a, a flavor profile called oily and coastal. And yeah. that was, I just, I gravitate towards that flavor profile. That's um, your, that's your move. 
that's that's my jam um just because i really love those those whiskeys that are that salty kind of coastal influence but kind of have that that oil slick oiliness about it so there really is i mean something for everyone in there i mean i'm one i'm interested in just trying stuff i like to try stuff that no one has ever tried before and probably won't ever like you know this is kind of the stuff even though it's not crazy expensive like some people like to flex their you know macallan 25s and the macallan 30s and i'm like i get it you spent you know a couple thousand bucks on a bottle like you got the macallan m like i get it but this is this is even more limited than a macallan m or yeah. or a, yeah so like some, yeah. you know you can bring this to give this as a gift or bring this to a party okay. and it's super rare no one's ever going to be able to try something like this and it's only I mean, I did see you had some a few expensive, expensive ones on there, but most of the things were around like two fifty for the maximum price. Right, and it ranges, you know. Um, yeah. The vault collection that we, you know, release every now and then, and those are like the really kind of older, really hard to find. Like, you know, you have to really search and dig for for these casks, you know, those kind right. of whiskeys. But on average, you know, we have some great whiskeys, you know, that are less than a hundred dollars, and yeah. so it's. It's really accessible, and um, you know the the variety of what you're getting is is expensive, and it's it's taught me a lot. I have to I have to be completely honest. You know, being here has taught me so much about whiskey that it's a uh, it's been a lot of fun. That's I mean that's really good. So we're actually almost coming up on an hour now. So I'm flying guys, with you. right, <laughs> guys. If you have any more questions, we'll take them in the last ten minutes. Um, I saw a few more come in, so we'll do these right now. But if you have any more questions about whiskey or just tasting whiskey in general, bourbon, anything, we will kind of try to help you out right now. Yeah. So next question, what would you recommend for a first-time whiskey drinker? I'm trying to get my girlfriend into whiskey. Gosh, you know, that is, that's hard because everyone's palate is so different. You know, yes. I see people who say they fell in love with whiskey through a Laphroaig. You know, like they had the yeah. for the time and it was like this, you know, and, and, and that was it, you know, so it's, it's just something different for every person. So it's really hard to kind of nail down. Would you, is there any suggestions to try to maybe you know, figure it out? Yeah. So kind of go off of what she likes, you know, is she, does she drink wine? What kind of wine does she drink? Maybe you should find, you know, a whiskey that is finished in, you know, a wine that she likes just to kind of make that, that mental connection. Um, you know, that's a great way to start or, um, you know, people who love like seafood and, and salty, you know, kind of profiles, then maybe you can start with a, a whiskey that's more coastal and kind of has those, those salty, you know, influences. So, Go start, you know, with what it is maybe she likes to eat or, um, you know, what she drinks and then kind of try to find whiskeys that branch out into those, into those flavor profiles. I, I would agree. I always suggest Bren. I know. Just, Alice is the best. <laughs> just, I mean, I, just because like one, I've, I've given Bren to so many people that were like, I don't like whiskey. And I was like, try, just try this. And they're like, this is delicious. It is the most. Yeah, that, you don't, I, you could taste that wine and you know it's Bren. Like, there is right. nothing else out there that is quite like it. Um, so, if Allison's so, watching this, hello, yeah. Allison. We love you. <laughs> yeah. So, so Bren is finished in cognac barrels. French oak, so yeah. So, you, you get a lot of, like, you get a lot of sweetness from, but, but you don't get, like, that syrupy flavor that sometimes comes along with cognac. So, you get a little bit of sweetness. It's a great, like intro if you if you like sweeter things and you don't want that like initial whiskey hit yeah. kind of it's almost like liquid blueberry muffins to me yeah like i pop the cork on that it smells like i just baked blueberry muffins <laughs> yes i mean for some people some people it's almost like too sweet but it's for the right time and the right occasion it's it's perfect it like i could like that's a daytime whiskey that i could sip on all day long, like especially in the summer, it's not too heavy. It's it's amazing. Um, all right, so next next question: What are some great whiskey glasses without breaking the bank? I, you know, so, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Clearin, right? 
like so the Glencairn glasses is a great you know option i don't think i have one here at my desk <laughs> But, you know, anything that's tulip shaped. So, yeah. you know, it has like a belly and then tapers up to the top. So um, my kind of inside tip on that is Goodwill. Mm -hmm. I have bought most of my glassware for whiskey. Um, I've, I've thrifted almost all of it. Um, I've been able to find some some great glasses um, to, to enjoy whiskey. But uh, there there's a lot. There's the Canadian Glencairn, which is a little bit heavier at the bottom. Um, yes. It has like a lighter, kind of heavier base, um, but it still kind of has that tulip shape, so it feels nice in the hand, you know, casually or, you know, if you're trying whiskey for a first time. Um, so the Glencairn glass, the Canadian Glencairn, a Copita or something, you know, tulip shaped like this. Um, there's also the Denver and Miley glasses are great. Yes. There's, there's a plethora of great glasses. Den Denver and Miley might break the bank a little bit, but they are phenomenal. Right. But if, again, I, I highly recommend, you know, estate sales, obviously when we're able to do that again. Yeah. Um, and I, and you know, your local thrift store, there's a lot of great glassware to be found. Yeah. I mean, my, my wife's parents live in kind of this community that has a lot of older people and they, like, I bought so much of their like crystal from yeah. estate sales and yeah. they're like, yeah, just take take the whole set for twenty five bucks. And I was like, you can't beat yeah. it. Okay. Yep. So when things get back to normal, check your local thrift store. Um, I'm sure you will find some great glassware. Yes. Um, next question we have from Jamar. He said, I have a buddy that's into drinking vodka cocktails, but wants to get into whiskey. What would you, which which one of your whiskeys should he try as an introduction? I guess he's asking for a single malt or with Scotch Malt Whiskey Society whiskey. Yeah, I would start gosh vodka. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think. I mean, really, you could start you know with something that's very crisp, um, you know, and and kind of a little simpler on the palate. So something maybe in the light and delicate profile that's ex bourbon. So yes. um, it's not a huge kind of, you know, wealth of cask influence. You're not getting, you know, those those fortified wine influences or anything like that. You're getting those classic kind of vanilla um, and caramel, you know, flavor profiles. So I would start there. I would I would agree. I mean, you could also try some whiskey cocktails if you're yeah. into vodka cocktails like. Yeah. Like a whiskey sour is essentially a lemon drop with whiskey. Yeah. So depending on his vodka cocktails, you could almost switch out the vodka for whiskey and the majority of them yeah. for a good start. And that's a great then, way to, to kind of introduce yourself to a lot of whiskey too is, you know, start, you know, with cocktail and just eventually take out the cocktail part and you're just left with whiskey. Right. I mean, I, yeah. I started with whiskey, whiskey sours and then moved into old fashions and then now I like an old fashioned on occasion just because it's a beautiful cocktail, but I've been drinking a lot more stuff, just neat and on the rocks and you know, however it feels, it's basically however it feels right is, is what's right for you guys. Absolutely. So like if, if, if you like it that way, drink it that way. Don't let anybody tell you that you have to drink it neat or you have to drink it on the rocks. If it doesn't taste good to you, you're going to hate the experience anyways. So you might as well drink it the way you like to drink it. The way you like it. So, yes, I think that, I think that pretty much. Oh, wait, this one's actually a good question as well. Um, how can you tell if a bottle of whiskey has gone bad or can it ever go bad? Um, gosh, that's a good question. Um, so, you know, the... I don't know, it's kind of hard to see in this, in one of these, but you know, when the, there's a lot of air, basically the air to liquid ratio, um, when that air amount is bigger, it's definitely going to influence the, the flavor of the whiskey. But I mean, I've had whiskeys opened for three years now, some whiskeys that I've just been kind of nursing, you know, over yeah. the last few years. And, you know, definitely the, the flavor does kind of definitely change. Um, just kind of as it oxidizes when more air gets into the bottle, um, but I don't know. I've I've never had one go longer than about three, maybe pushing four years. So I haven't given it enough time to see if it goes bad yet. 
Yeah. I mean, the only thing I would think of, if I could say anything, is if there's a natural cork in the top of your whiskey to at least give it like a every now and then to keep the cork moist because you're going to get a lot of like dry cork in your yes. whiskey when you open it up. If it dries out and it stands stand straight up for too long, you yeah. could lay it down like wine, but you really just need to give it yeah. kind of a every now and then. Yep. I don't, they don't last that long, I guess, in my yeah. house. <laughs> and, 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 and whiskey doesn't really, you can't, I mean, some people think you can, you can't really bottle age whiskey. Yeah. Like I it mean, doesn't, doesn't change like wine like, does. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, last question. Do you ever use a decanter for your whiskey? I don't. I Honestly, this is, I'm going to be completely honest with you guys right now. I do, but the only reason there's whiskey in a decanter in my house is because it's whiskey that I'm ashamed to have in a bottle on, <laughs> on my shelf. So, um, yeah, like I have, I have whiskey in a decanter, <laughs> one for, for some photos and, and stuff, just because it looks very, very nice. But, um, yeah, there's, it's not great whiskey in my decanter. It's, it's something like super basic like uh like not 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 really ashamed to have in it but like it's it's bullet rye in my decanter it's not anything i would never put something super super old that i didn't remember what it was in a decanter you know yeah and i just i love one i'll break a decanter because i break <laughs> anything that's glass you know and delicate like that is not safe but um i just i love the experience of holding a whiskey like the, pouring the whiskey into the glass you know there's there's something to be said, I think, about, you know, the actual bottle itself. Right. Um, and I just love that experience of hearing that cork pop. And it's, you know, it's a full experience. So, there, nope, I'm not a decanter kind of gal. There is kind of a beautiful thing about a decanter, too, because people tend to assume that it's, like, fancy whiskey in there. So, a lot of people are like, this is so smooth and so delicious. I'm like, it is, isn't it? It's delicious. Don't you yeah. love a good bullet rye? <laughs> Like, I mean, it's because it it gives it gives you that impression that like, oh, it's in a nice glass decanter. It's got to be good. And that's preconceived, you know, I mean, whatever, whatever helps, though, you know, for your for your friends. I'm all for it. Um, But definitely I've I've poured a few like super expensive. Like I poured Black Art 4 for a few friends and watched them just go and shoot it and I was like all right moving on to the decanter for you right <laughs> <laughs> well it's nice because um on the back of our bottles it says not for swigging glugging or knocking back yes Please drink responsibly yes so take your time with it you know exactly I think it is, you know meant to really just sit and and enjoy and I hope it you know helps people slow down a little and really just enjoy the moment and they're all they're all super super strong in cast strength. So like, yeah. If you're if you're just shooting this stuff, it's one, it's a waste of whiskey, and two, it's gonna be a bad time for you. Yeah, not something I would recommend. Yes. So we've we've hit an hour. Um, this was awesome. Yes, this was super fun. Um, guys, thank you for asking questions about whiskey. Maybe we can make this a regular thing when you drop. Maybe the next round of. Yeah. of whiskeys and we can do this again because this was super fun um anything you would like to specifically say about the scotch malt whiskey society or your info in general G- give yeah. your little two minute end of the the live pitch <laughs> um yeah so if you have any questions um you know regarding the whiskey or membership um please feel free to reach out to me you can reach me personally at jenna at smwsa.com um, or you can give us a call um, it'll be myself or my colleagues who are brilliant and amazing um, picking up the phone. So any questions that you have, you know, we're happy to answer them. And, you know, whiskey's really for sharing. And, you know, we would love to have you, you know, part of the club. And uh, so, again, any questions, you know, about anything, we're here. That's, you know, we love to share this this information and the knowledge. And it brings me great joy to do things like this and to just, you know, take an hour out of the day and talk about whiskey um, I, I feel very grateful for it. So thank you for 
for having me. Of and course. Uh, yeah. So we'll have to do it again. You'll have to watch yes. for our next, our next big drop of, of whiskeys is going to be on Tuesday, June the 2nd. Um, everything goes live on our website for members at one o'clock Eastern time. And myself and my colleague, Ben, um, some of you may follow him on Instagram at Single Malt Alliance. Um, we will be doing a kind of preview tasting of what's to come on Monday um, on YouTube. So if anybody has any other questions, they can, you know, jump over there and see what's coming out. Awesome. So I will link to one, your email and phone number to call down below. And also, if you have a link to that live session that's going to come up, I'll put that in the description down below so you guys can check that out if you want to. And um, yeah, that pretty much wrapped it up, guys. Jenna, if you want to hang on the line real quick, um, we will chat real quick once I get up, once we end this. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. We'll see you on the next one. Um, there might not be many more because I guess things are getting back to normal for all of us. And this was a fun <laughs> quarantine session. But if, if we stay in longer, we will keep doing these lives. So cheers, guys. Okay.